Does God exist? This is perhaps the most important question that men can ask. I freely admit that I cannot prove his existence empirically. I can't see him, touch him, or perceive him with the five senses that I possess. Now, others could speak a bit more authoritatively on the subject. Moses would be an example who spoke directly with the Lord. Uh, Our own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would be another example. He descended from heaven in the presence of God and then, of course, returned there after his resurrection. Now, his resurrection is another thing that we're going to have to prove, perhaps in a future video cast, but we'll leave that for now. I accept that God exists, and I accept it by faith. I believe. Now, that's not to say that it's a a blind faith. I think that there is compelling evidence of his existence. I believe that we are surrounded by the evidence of his existence. There is an argument that is made concerning the existence of God that is called the teleological argument. The word teleological comes from the Greek word telos, And it means uh, end or purpose. So the argument is that our universe, nature, exhibits purpose, an end, or in other words, design. And unless such a perception is an error, the fact that there is an exhibition of design in the universe, well, there must of necessity be a designer. Now, this is something that we recognize and see every day. For example, we see a camera. We recognize that someone must have designed or made that camera. And yet the eye is a much more delicate and sophisticated instrument. We see a computer. It's a machine that takes ones and zeros, and through sheer computational power, it translates those two digits into pictures and sounds and wonderful tools for productivity. Now, it is obviously the product of man, and yet it cannot even approximate the intelligence and power of the human brain. Now, we could note other things about the body, the the heart, the lungs, the liver, the inner ear, and we wonder at the sophistication of the design. The human body is aesthetically pleasing, it is extremely durable, and it is, in fact, far superior to any artificial efforts that even the most brilliant of men have made uh, to replicate it or duplicate it. And that's just the human body. The same observations can be made throughout the physical universe, considering objects both animate and inanimate. The psalmist noted the power of such observations in the 19th Psalm in the first three verses when he said, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge, and there is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. The evidence that our universe is the product of design is compelling. Paul wrote in Romans 1 that those who do not see it are without excuse. They deny it, not because they can't see it, but rather because they don't want to see it. Now, why would that be? Well, think about it. If they admit the omniscient and omnipotent God is the designer of the universe, then they must admit that they have an obligation to him. Now, in future video casts, we will examine those obligations that we have to the divine. But for now, let's just think about the cosmos. Think about the stars and the planets and our own wonderful world. Consider the most majestic of mountains. And then think of the smallest of plants. Think about our own wonderful body. And then consider the wonder of the process of thinking itself. You see, the evidence is there right before your eyes. Yes, indeed, God does exist.